Cause I'm a boss. How are you? I'm good. I'm I'm like literally cross promoting you on the gram right now. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so good. I'm. So I feel good. like Janet. Like um, I was talking to a girlfriend about this recently, and I'm. I don't know if you feel this way too, because I know you talk a lot about mental health a lot, and you know, on your platforms and depression and dealing with that and working your way through that. Just different things. I always. I'm, I'm very tuned in when you post those. Um, those, those particular, uh, you know, content pieces. But for me, 2020 was good. I felt like I was able to really pivot with the times and, you know, you and I are so very event driven here in Miami. So that all came to a halt, but I was able to pivot and really focus on things that were parked and that were on the bench that I didn't have time to, because life was so crazy. DJ media life was so crazy. But I will tell you that I definitely suffered some burnout at the end of the year. Like I was ready for the holidays. I was not ready for January to kick back up. And so it, it kind of kicked my ass and caught up with me like top of the year because I'm used to traveling and writing and just all of that minutia, you know, making my world work. But, but all that was on hold. So I don't know, I was just like, I gotta get away. You know, Miami Beach is not cutting it. <laughs> so I definitely have been working through feeling um, you know, quite, uh, quite exhausted lately. And, 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 you know, top of the year for me was, was the, I think, crunch time to like really relax and just take a break. And practice self-compassion. Yes. Which yes. is a new thing for me at <laughs> least, but welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today on our second women's month, her story sessions. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Janet Jones Veloso, and I am the founder of VXN. The purpose of this series is to share knowledge and valuable insights from women who are leaders in their industries and have shattered their own glass ceilings. I'd like to introduce today's mentor, media maven, Vanessa, the voice, Jane. <laughs> Oh, I like that. I'm going to start using that. Vanessa's that's the voice, voice, right? You like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, we vibe KTU. Keeping New York moving all summer long. The hottest songs from today. And the KTU throwbacks you love. Miami's Hits 97.3. Ten hits in a row on the new Hits 97.3. Hello, this is Beyonce. What up, it's your boy Jay-Z. Keep listening to win your tickets to the On The Run 2 Tour at Hard Rock Stadium Friday, August 31st. Details at hits973.com. You're on something big here, honey. Media maven Vanessa James uses her multi-platform career to inspire others every day. Clap for Vanessa. On your website, you have this quote, which I loved. And it's, um, when you find your voice and passion in life, don't run from the sound of it. Embrace every step and every note. Yes. Yay. So everyone, welcome, Vanessa. And I think we should just get started with um, what we started talking about before we officially yes. started this webinar about 2020 and how are you doing today? So where are you today? How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing really good. Um, again, I, you know, Janet, as we were talking about, first of all, thank you so much for this platform and this series and connecting with you. We should be doing this over cocktails, but it's all good soon enough <laughs> at the Vixen studio. I know. <laughs> I know. Soon enough, but um, I'm doing good. As I was mentioning before, you know, when we first came on, I feel like 2020 was so emotional for so many. We were dealing with, with the height of a pandemic and just loss in so many ways. A lot of people of their jobs, their lifestyles, their livelihoods, but then family members too. So I was definitely um, taking all of that into consideration and really, you know, operating with a form of grace, right? Like that's the one thing, like even clients that I was working with were like, don't worry, V, it's, it, there's no rush, that type of thing, you know, like, so I was able to really take that time because as you know, here in Miami, I do a lot of events, the Women of Impact Dinner, BJ Media Mixology. Last year, I launched my very first FET, 
our, our own food and wine experience for the, you know, for our, our, um, our, our Caribbean peeps, which is hugely successful called Food, Wine and Fet. So all of that was on hold, but it really gave me some time to kind of focus on things that were on, parked on the bench that I didn't, that I don't, you know, you know those things. You're like, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. I really want to do this YouTube series. I really want to relaunch my website. I really want to learn about stocks, all that type of stuff. Those are the things that I took off the bench and really focused on in 2020 because we weren't going anywhere. We were all up in here getting our quarantine 15 on cooking all all the all the truffle goodness, right? Yeah. So so um I I I did all the things and it was fantastic, but I do feel, Janet, that towards the end, I was feeling what I saw a lot of people in in Zoom chats talking about that they were burnt out, you know, because I'm used to traveling and writing awesome stories about, you know, amazing destinations, things like that. And all of that uh, again was on hold. So I tried to channel as much, you know, creativity into creating things and, and continuing to just give and push things out to people, but I feel like the the word exhaustion come you know late December early January like I closed the computer and was like don't email me one more script you know but voiceover really kicked up too so I started doing a lot more promos national promos and commercials and and really owning my craft and, and that's a thing about I'm sure I'm sure you know like especially as an entrepreneur it doesn't matter how much we grow and learn if there's always another level and layer of polishing and fine-tuning what we do to you know to make sure that our output is like the most excellent right whether that be brand partnerships your social media presence apparel merch you're putting out your process delivery your workouts right so for me i really dived into vo deeper and focused on how i could make sure i was having the best gear the best equipment in my closet and really delivering awesome stuff you know for clients and so that's been good and here comes 2021 roaring, just, just as, as I anticipated, I'm sure you probably feel that way too. Like all of a sudden, because brands and different, different clients kind of like were on hold, budgets were on hold, all of that. I'm starting to see everybody's like, hey, can I have this ASAP? Everything lately, ASAP, ASAP. So Urgent, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to like keep my woo saw. <laughs> I hope that, that was very long winded, but that's how I'm doing. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it was a hell of a year. Yes. Um, the there is something that you mentioned on your site yeah. um well let's backtrack right so let's start from the beginning as in you going to florida state university you got your degree there um in mass communications and spanish probably because you're from miami so you knew that that yeah. would come in handy right 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 um, you've always known that you wanted to be in radio or how did that passion get started? No, not at all. I always knew that I wanted to be um, a sideline reporter for Monday Night Football. And that's what I went to, for, to Florida State for because they had a great mass media program. And, and you specifically studied sports casting? I went to, I went to, well, you know, your first two years is, is, is really just about, you know, getting your foot, you know, in the door and wet. And then those last two years, you know, you focus on the actual trade, but um, I went and when I went to study sports casting, because I loved Robin Roberts, I just loved everything about her and I adored her. And I'm like, I want to do that, you know, but I really loved her storytelling, how she was able to, you know, really convey what was going on on the sidelines and all of that. So, and I, I was, I always grew up around a bunch of boys and they loved football. They forced me to love it too. So, so I naturally did. But when I went to FSU, I started out wanting to do that and then grab gravitated towards radio on a whim because I needed a job and I was listening to the radio and uh, there was an, an opportunity for a receptionist at, at this, at this, you know, clear channel station in Tallahassee. I'm like, let me, and I was working at a construction company at a time, you know, at the time I'm like, let me go ahead and submit, you know, just on, on the whim, my resume. Yeah, and they called, yeah. yeah. They called me and was like, I, I was talking under my breath, like, yeah, this is her. Um, okay. Well, can you come in? I left on my lunch break and never went back to that job. <laughs> So got the gig as the receptionist, worked my way up, fell in love with the process. And while I was there, I was like, this is a great opportunity to, to, to work with the sports station there, right? 
and really start to do some of that type of stuff because again, it kind of fit into the whole sports casting world. And I was doing a lot of that type of, um, you know, volunteering and, and, and learning the, the equipment and all of that and the studio and just the whole process and just really fell in love with radio. And I started getting asked to do afternoon, I'm sorry, um, overnight shows, which is where you get to make all of your mistakes because no one's listening, right? Um, and, um, you know, the night shows. And then I, I was approached by the program director, like, hey, you know, we think you're great. You know, we'd like to try you out for midday. So that's how I got started. And then from middays to promotions and, and just doing multiple things. Listen, I'm from the Caribbean. I never have had just one job. So even no, I'm the same way. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same way. And it's funny because yesterday's mentor, Clara, we were talking about how, um, I don't know if it's uh, something from how we were brought up because yeah. I'm Dominican and Cuban and I know that you're Trinidadian. So it's like okay. the, the Caribbean, right? Yeah. And I don't know if it's a thing of like this work ethic that's instilled in us since I was little. I remember my dad always saying, it's like, you have to, like your work ethic is no different than any value that you have as a person as in like you would consider yourself honest or you would consider yourself these 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 things um and your work ethic are a part of your value system absolutely 200 percent. like your follow-through game keeping your word yeah um, st standing up for your set yourself confidently expressing you know what your needs are like those are all the things that my mom would you know teach me but she would also teach me like um the 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 one thing that I wish that she would, I would say would have taught me better would be to negotiate. Because there's so many yeah. opportunities looking back where I was like, damn, I could have got 20,000 more, 30, you know, during in those corporate situations. But absolutely, I think our our Caribbean blood definitely and, and that multi-passionate um, aspect of, of, of who we are as a community is the reason I feel like we're able to thrive because we're like, okay, I come into a situation you know, but in corporate radio at that time, and, and and even here in Miami, where I was, you know, courted for more than one opportunity, they were like, hold on, but Vanessa, you do um, marketing, and, you know, you're great on air, but, you know, you know, I, I, we feel like you'd be great for music director, too. How do you feel about all three of these jobs? And so I was excited about it, now realizing, hold on a second, that's a lot of work, V, <laughs> you know? So the mentorship aspect for me, looking back on my younger 20 something, 30 something self is as excited as we are for opportunities, Janet, we need to make sure that we understand the scope of work, right? And the output and then how much money that is going to require in order to be able to deliver those services for that client. So becoming a little bit more transactional, you know, while still being passionate because a lot of times our passion can get in the way and we're like, yeah, I'll take it. I'll take the gig. I'll take the gig. So excited. And then you're there till 10 o'clock at night, crunching stuff out and everybody's left, you know? Yeah. And then you start um, feeling resent and yes, then it yes. just affects like your energy and how you output. And you, I mean, it's just human nature. You tend to put blame in your environment that you're responsible for putting yourself in for not advocating for yourself in the beginning. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. again, sometimes not, well, all the time, you really have to be your biggest advocate. And that's the one thing I always tell people, especially specifically who are negotiating new jobs in this new post, post almost post COVID world. Like uh, there's a lot of people that are, are not going to be transitioning back to work. What is that going to look like? Is it work from home? Is it, is it work from home, you know, half the time and back to the office the other half the time? Well, what are you negotiating with, the, you know, your company about what works for you? Because the one thing that I've been speaking to, and I'm sure you can attest to from a lot of people is, listen, this work from home thing is more exhausting. And kind of, people are kind of feeling like, I kind of want the balance of being, going back to the office and feeling like I can shut down at a certain time. When you're working from home, 10, 11 o'clock at night, people are still emailing you. It's true. It, it, and, and that's the one thing I've been hearing from people that are kind of excited to get back to a office space they don't miss the Miami traffic. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But yeah, but you know, back to an office space where they can clock in and clock out mentally too. A thousand percent. Um, let's talk about being multifaceted and having multiple interests and having multiple talents. Right. Um, 
I've always been obsessed with learning and I've always entered a situation um, completely eager to learn every single part of what makes it work. So when I started as a professional dancer, I would be there and I would see like, okay, the choreographer does this, but then who's the choreographer's boss? What do they do? And who's that person's boss? What do they do? And like, just, I was always obsessed with just understanding how everything works Mm -hmm. and then digging even deeper than that. Like be like, okay, what exactly like your day to day, like what are the skills that you need to do your job? And just really being, um, a great observer of situations and just being a shy person and an introvert I've when I was studying I was never like the person who wanted to show off or did anything for recognition I was literally the person in the back just observing absolutely everything and in doing that I made myself my, my power came from knowing what every single person needed before they needed to ask for it because I, I was that much, of a, yeah, I observed. So then by being that way, it made me indispensable in every environment that I was in because it wasn't about me and what I could get from the situation. It was more, how can I add value to the environment that I'm in and how can I make my boss look awesome because right. if he looks awesome, he's going to feel like he can't, he needs me. Right. Right. And I feel like, I don't know. I mean, they don't really teach you much in school about anything, but I know that being that way was something that I learned from my mentors, which were my dance teachers. And, um, and that I feel has contributed a lot to where I am today. Mm -hmm. Um, and the knowledge that I have, because I'm able, I know a lot about a lot and I'm very good at a lot of things, even though I, I focus, but being that way for sure has contributed. Do you have anyone in that time of your life where you were just in that position where obviously you caught the eye of someone in order to give you the responsibility of being program director at such a young age? Was there like a mentor or someone who influenced your mindset during that time? Absolutely. I mean, there were so many. Um, I can think of one quickly. Um, so <clears throat> Steve King, he was the first program, you know, he was the operations manager. And that is, as you were saying, the boss of the boss, right? At my old uh, um, cluster in Tallahassee. And he would always tell me, um, be, be the last one to leave the room and turn the lights off. And I would be like, okay, well, I don't want to, you know, I, I, but at his point was uh, of that was that you learned everything that you understood how all the gear worked. that if you needed to jump in for whatever reason, if a talent was unavailable or running late in traffic, you could jump in and handle it until the actual on-air personality got there. Cause at that time I was behind the scenes, right? Another mentor of mine, Doc Winter at the time when I was really, really eager to get back to Miami um told me and it always has stuck with me i share this all the time it's very important vanessa for you to be malleable because entertainment comes at you fast and so you being malleable allows you to be flexible and be and 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 mold into any situation right and so i really use that all the time i think about that and i talk to him because i say malleable to him when I do catch up with them. It's been a while since we've spoken, but just to say, how many times have you been in a situation or you know, um, with a job or, or in life where you've been like, hold on a second, you know what? I could have bent a little to make this work. You know, I could have been a little bit more flexible. And so for me now, I've really learned to flow through life because of tips from mentors like that. You know, really understanding that, um, Uh, my biggest thing that, and I don't necessarily know if it's a mentor, it's something that I really pride myself in um, and and that I share with entrepreneurs all the time. Follow up and follow through is key to success. What do I mean by that, Janet? I mean, it's very, it's, it's really awesome to get a, for instance, to get a really awesome ESPN gig from my agency. They send the script, I voice it, the client loves it. We do the session. It's a wrap. It's done. No, not for Vanessa. For Vanessa, it is 
hi, I want to check in and see how, you know, how everything is running and if everything is, is good on your end. Palace Resorts today sent me something. As soon as I'm done with you, I have to go and voice something for that. I want to make sure it's not quite right. We've gone at this point, we've done the session three times and it's not quite right. It, and of course I could be like, listen, you know, I have to upcharge you a rate for, no, listen, this is my client. We've gone back five years. I feel like we've grown together. And so it's, it's important for me that you're happy with what it is that I'm giving you. And then I follow up and say, hey, it was an absolute pleasure working with you and thank you for the opportunity. I get the weirdest and it always catches me off guard. I had a client, Fernando Rodriguez, who worked for Lincoln. You know Fernando, because he was at the dinner for that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. At Lowe's. He said to me, and he constantly tells me all the time, still to this day, you know, you're one of the only clients I've worked with who sends handwritten notes and thank you cards or who sends like a thank you gift. So I, again, I think it's important. It's almost like thinking with your left and your right you know, side of your brain, right? Left to get all the things done, but never forget that you always lead with your heart, you know, and lead with compassion. And I think that's what people remember. And so my mentor that I've never met, Mrs. Oprah Winfrey, that I will meet one day very yeah. soon, she's got that famous quote um, that she took from Maya Angelou and kind of made her own, but obviously it's Maya's quote, people never forget that you, excuse me, people never forget that the way that you make them feel, people never forget the way you make them feel. It's really about, I want, I want to make sure that people leave their experience with Vanessa James Media and with me, BJ, um, feeling better than, you know, when they entered into the situation, whatever that may be. And I've really started to, um, to I don't know if you've been doing this too, um, saying no to opportunities so that the ones that I, I, I'm, you know, I embrace, I rock out with all of my heart, passion, soul, and my pinky toe, you know, but I can't do that for everything and everybody. So I've really learned to scale back less is more so I can focus more now on the things that are, I'm really excited about and work with clients and, you know, opportunities that really bring me joy. I know that's like the weirdest saying, and because, uh, you know, when you're in the hustle, Janet, you just, you, you know, want to say yes to everything. Yeah. You want to say yes to everything. You want to fill the 20,000 merch order, whatever it is, but it's like, if you're going to be exhausted and your team's going to be exhausted, does it really make sense? And especially yeah. for what is the output from it? So again, those, I, I would say the nuggets of wisdom that I would share, you know, be impeccable with your word, follow through is the key to longevity in business, especially as an entrepreneur, you know, and really being open and being malleable to doing things different and to constantly, I always give myself a six month check as a, a you know, as, as the CEO of my brand and check in and say, how could I be doing this better? You know, and some people are thrown off by it because they're like, be you're great whatever or they're like you know weird like i would say introverts or you know they're, oh, i don't know me i think you're you know so, so people respond different to you when you when you say hey i know we're working together but i want to elevate the level and the quality of work that we have together how could i be improving especially in voiceover because it's it's so transactional but it, it's 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 such a compassionate field you have to put so much energy and love into a script and bring it to life every single day every single time i read like the new bruno mars album is coming out it's got to be the biggest thing vanessa talks about that day palace Resort. you know what i'm saying so i'm constantly on so i think when you're constantly which is exhausting on, it's exhausting so you really have to pick and choose what you want to be you know be a little bit more picky but also when you, whenever you get that gig be impeccable with your delivery I think a few, you, I mean, you gave us so many amazing <laughs> nuggets of wisdom there, but I want to um, touch upon a few. Sure. One is that the, the whole caliber of work, the standard of operating for you is great. Yeah. It has to be great. Some people might argue that um, it's perfectionism, which is a trigger for me. Um, <laughs> like, I know, I know, I, I mean, I do, I, I, I'm aware that there's sometimes that perfectionism is an issue, but it can never interfere with the standard of operating to a certain caliber of work. Right. And also one thing that's unique to, not unique, but why, um, I feel 
that women have to be in leadership positions just because that empathy and that intuitive notion to not only deliver great product, but to have the intuition, the empathy to, to do things and go beyond that because you're able to see what the consumer might need. Yeah. or what's their experience once they receive your product or what you would like if you were in their shoes. Right. And, and that's, that's, why, that's like, what makes you great. Yeah. Have you ever noticed though, like, especially when you're getting unboxing things from clients, have you ever noticed that the ones sometimes that are the most warm and fuzzy or the most thoughtful are from women brands? Cause we yeah. thought about, Oh, but you know, BJ's going to get this box. I, I know it's got all this stuff that, that you know, I, I want her to review and take a look at and put on her social media, but the little note and the, Hey, I thought this would be perfect for you so or scary. whatever it is. It's like, you can't buy that. It's, no, you can't. it's the thoughtfulness that, that women, like we, as women, that's just our natural gene. We're born with that. Right. And it's not to say that men aren't thoughtful, but men are born to be a little bit more transactional, get it done, to, yeah. you know, a little bit more abrasive where women are a little bit more caring. And we put that into the products, you know, a thousand and so percent. And also there's a certain kind of intelligence that is of major value with having that empathy and that intuition. And what I mean by that is like, there's been several times where I've been in a room with a marketing team with men, just because the realities of where we live, it's like when you are at a C-level marketing team, sure. a lot of them are men, you might have one woman, but they were like amazed at how I knew so much stuff mm. without being educated in it. And I'm like, right. for me, it's so simple. It's literally just putting yourself in the consumer's shoes. When they open up that website, what is their experience? And if you think of it that way, um, with everything in business, it's just the answers just come to you because it's yeah. really just you're, you're creating product and creating content and just creating things for a consumer. Right. So if you're unable to put yourself in their shoes, you're going to have to spend a lot of money on <laughs> on an outside team giving you data and, and yeah. about not even the work for you. Yeah. And, and I, I do want to say with this disclaimer, everybody doesn't naturally have that trait. And so yeah. the one thing that I've really learned in business to do is figure out what you're really good at and the things that you are not, are not good at that are going to take you so much time, hire someone that's good at it to do it. Uh, Listen, uh, I don't want to code. Bad. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to um, edit videos. That's I not my, editing. I don't, you know what I'm saying? So no, I, no, 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 don't ever, I love editing, but the six hours that it takes yeah. to get it just the way that I want it, when yeah, someone yeah. crunch it out in an hour and a half is what I'm talking about. Yeah, so yeah. I just feel like, what could I be doing instead? And so that's, that's really how I've learned to structure a team where at the end of the day, here's the goal and here's the output that we're going to deliver to people. Um, so how can I best get this done versus let me try to do it all on my own. And, and that comes with years of experience and also years of, of learning to let things go because it's your baby, right? That you're working on, that you're handing off to someone. A thousand percent. And it's um, having a team that, um, that you trust to deliver at the same capacity because yeah. at the end it's your name yeah you know okay yeah. so I want to go to after leaving corporate America yeah okay you talk about the mental shift of becoming an entrepreneur yes please elaborate on that okay here's what I'm going to say about that entrepreneurship is not for everybody and there are a lot of people that I know that are thriving in their corporate jobs and hooray for them. I, 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 I hate when people glamorize entrepreneurship that it's just, you know, rose petals and beach walks and just money in the bank, honey. Every, oh. No, Janet. No, like, it's a I'm lot of grit and grind and crazy looking hair and 3 a.m., you know, um, strategy because something is launching the next day and all of that. And it's the buck starts and stops with you. But um, when I left the corporate space, I definitely felt like um, 
I wasn't going to go back to corporate just yet. Now that just yet has turned into 10, 10 years and doesn't look like that's gonna happen anytime soon. I love working with brands in an IC, independent contractor capacity, because it's like, let me deliver what you need and keep it moving, you know? So I, I love being my own boss in that way. But the one thing I will say is, there is a, mind, a, a mindset shift that needs to happen if you're going to jump into this world. And it really is understanding uh, and really, I would say this, looking back and telling myself, you know, if I could give myself advice at 30 when I you know, started uh, as an entrepreneur, it would be, think about Vanessa, what is it that, what's the legacy that you're trying to create? You might not have the entire blueprint figured out now, but your mind shift needs to be going from what are you going to give to this company today to what is it that you're going to give to the world today? what legacy are you going to leave that you want to leave with the world with your stamp your name on it your ein number on it right janet and so once i started to think about that it of course entrepreneurship is a hustle specifically in the beginning when you're trying to gain clients and get your you know get your footing right and find your flow but once you find your flow and that flow comes with confidence a lot of nose and shaking and brushing your shoulders off from the nose and keeping going is very important. Um, I can't tell you how many no's I've gotten. I can't tell you how many times I've followed up, never got an email back and then saw a client at a cocktail and I'm like, hey, sent you an email. They're like, yeah, sorry, forgot to respond. Learning how to manage expectations has been yeah. a huge mindset shift for me. Of course you of course you have to manage expectations in corporate in the corporate world but corporate has that structure where people kind of need to follow up right or their jobs are on the line there needs to be communication because that's the whole point of the corporate structure but as an entrepreneur a lot of times you're kind of just out there waiting right for feedback or how did this go or you know is this vendor going to be able to fulfill this thing on time that type of thing so managing expectations and being really clear about what your intentions are um from the jump i think has saved has saved me so much time because again people tend to glamorize entrepreneurship and when you get down to the nitty gritty and the dollars of it i bring a lot of my corporate and I think that's the reason I've been able to be a successful entrepreneur, Janet, is because I bring a lot of my corporate, let's say, um, qualities with me in terms of structure, but I always lead with my entrepreneurial passion and spirit too. And the combination of both is the reason I feel like BJ Media has been able to stay in business and be, and be profitable 10 years in. You know what that's, I'm saying? That's a long time. That's a long time. And I would still consider myself level, level one, level two, because I haven't upped to like, you know, you know, the six figure, I'm still working on that. We're getting there, but, but we're getting close. So my point of is the, I think the reason I'm able to continue to be successful with that mindset shift is learning and understanding what your legacy is, is, it is and building a blueprint out that, that allows that, that, you know, that, that, stamp you want to put on the world to come to fruition what does it look like what does it feel like what does the color palette look like who is my team who do, who's rocking with me um you know who that type of thing above and beyond marketing structure email blasts and all of that you know it's really about what things feel like and and again that that mark i want to leave on the world so you're not thinking about a mark a mark that you want to leave on the world when you're crunching out something for a corporation it's their mark you're leaving on the world you know I have a question when you made that jump were you forced to make it was the decision that you made on your own was it because you wanted to be rich or was it because you saw something that was missing that you knew that you could provide? Like what was the drive? Cause there's like yeah. a driving force oh, yes. for you to jump. Full transparency here. It was a layoff here in Miami for, for my radio station that was doing a station flip. And my general manager called me in and I thought I was good. And he was like, listen, V, you're part of this layoff after ha having to lay off my staff. Um, and that was really like incredibly tumultuous. But they were like, listen, we have a gig waiting for you in San Francisco. Same gig, same, same format. If you want it, you know, that's how we can keep you in the company. 
and I just didn't want to move. I said, listen, I've built so much time, energy, relationships, um, and fostered so much opportunity here in Miami. I didn't want to pick up and move to San Francisco and pay $3,000 rent for 400 square feet and live and, you know, and eat ramen noodles by myself while I figured it out for four years. I didn't want to do that. I put too much work into this market. So that's when I, well, I had launched BJ Media because I was getting freelance work before that. So that was just God's grace there, like making sure that all that was. So naturally I already had it kind of, kind of established to say, okay, hold on a second. I'm not taking the San Francisco job. I'm not going to South Carolina. What is it? Okay, we let's, you know, let's have a, a have a conversation with the tribe about what it is that you want to do. Uh, I'll tell you another nugget of wisdom. One of my very good friends um, to this day and mentor, um, JJ told me, hey, you know what, V? <clears throat> You're really good at what you do. Take a vacation. You've put your ass into this industry for 10 years. Take a vacation, go to Paris. And so, it, yeah, it's very lighthearted what she said, but what she was saying even deeper was, you know, take some time to like, think about what it is that you want before you jump back into the next thing. Because a lot of times when you lead with fear, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm leaving this very high profile, six plus figure job, front row tickets to everything, all access to everything. You know what I'm saying? Usher, yeah. uh, Alicia Keys on, you, you know what I'm trying Usher to say? on speed <laughs> Not speed dial, but his manager, yes, you know, yeah. so that's the thing. So, but to go from that to transitioning to feeling like, hold on a second, my phone stopped ringing. What's up? No, oh, no one needs Jay Z tickets today. That type of thing. So it's daunting because, but then it's 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 such a gut punch that it's the biggest, it's the best thing that could have ever happened to me because it allowed me to see um, the industry for what it was and to and to. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I had grievances with um, people just falling by the wayside, like in the matter of two months, all of a sudden, not picking up your calls. I'm like, hold on a second. I was just playing your record and putting your promotion in and all this, hold up, you know? But um, as I was trying to figure out my way, and I had applied for a, a lot of really awesome other jobs um, in radio at the time and also in entertainment, but I just kept my intuition just kept telling me like, you already have BJ Media started, V, you already have your EIN number. Hmm, maybe you could reach out to them in another way and work with them as an independent contractor, you know? And um, and that's how things really got started. And but who mind- was, who were you surrounded with at that time? Like who in your circle of friends, were they also entrepreneurs or, cause I feel like mm-hmm. there's this question space between where you are, where you want to be, and that space of when you take the leap. Mm -hmm. The most important factor, I believe, is who you have surrounded, like who you have around you, because if someone would have been like, V, girl, Mm -hmm. you can't do that. Are you insane? Like, you know, how are you going to survive? How are you going to eat? If you have those people around you, you, you won't, you won't do it. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I probably would have done it because I have Trinidadian parents, honey. Okay. And they're like, listen, hello. We, we will find a way. We will find a way. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah? So no, but um, but you're so right. And so for me, that was really Doug Turkel, who told me very early on, like we worked together in radio and now he's a full-time entrepreneur, VO artist who's amazing. Um, he's one of my big VO mentors, and he was like, V, listen there's a whole structure to this. It's more than just getting in the booth and voicing a script. Like you need to form a company. This is in 2008 before I even started, you know, like left corporate. He's like, you need to form a company. You need to know what an invoice is. You need to launch a website. Like he gave me the, and so he gave me that structure and flow before I was thinking about it, you know, because he was like, hello, send me an invoice. I need to pay you, you know, for that, that freelance freelance gig. I tell him all the time. I'm like, thank God. Before I Venmo. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have Venmo then. Yeah. Right? Anyway, but no, I, I think your your question was about mind, mindset shift. And so the biggest thing is, is in corporate, you, you lead with structure because it's a part of their corporate structure. And as an entrepreneur, structure absolutely is important, but so is passion um, and, and so is compassion, right? And so I just would say, um, 
be really clear about what it is that you want your legacy of your company, of your LLC, of your S Corp, whatever that is to be. If you can start there on what is it that I want people to, to walk away with, you're already starting on better ground than, well, I really want to, you know, launch this new merch line. Great. But everybody has a, a a, you know, merch line or, you know, wants to be an influencer or whatever it is. So I always tell people to start there. What is it that I want? What, what is it that I want my legacy and my mark to be? And almost work backwards. I want to talk about on your blog, you mention grief from yes, 2020 girl. and most specifically professional grief. I love, I love how it how all up in my website you are yes I'm all up in your <laughs> business girl yes okay um so- I think I think because I the professional grief I hadn't heard that coined before mm-hmm. but I and I'm someone who has experienced a lot of loss in her life as far as grieving loved ones right um but when 2020 hit the feeling was the same and the feeling of getting the news of having to close and that whole sinking feeling where you feel like you're just like in the tower of terror just falling is yes. it was a very similar feeling that you get when you hear terrible news of losing a loved one or something like that so right. i had never heard it i i knew that i felt the similarities but i never heard it coined before so what was that for you, professional grief? Honestly, that article was, was, was written because I was getting so many people, Janet, coming to me saying, V, oh my gosh, I'm leaving corporate or I'm leaving my job or I'm getting laid off like, and I'm in a rut or I got laid off or I haven't been able to find you know work. And I don't know what, like feeling like, pulled and pushed and not, you know, clear. And so I wrote that because that's how I was feeling when I left corporate. I really wish that I had a mentor at that time. And that's what the, the, uh, the blog post was really for is really, really, is really, re, excuse me, me really helping to mentor you on ways to work through pr- and processing what you're feeling. Cause it's very emotional. And a lot of people, love their jobs, right? We are a society that's built around work. That is the way that this country was built, right? And so with that being said, when you get that jolt of, hey, thank you so much, well, you know, your services are no longer need- needed or the company's closing down or we're downsizing, dot, 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 dot. Um, or, you know what, you, you know, your business um, is not um, flowing that, you know, though, I don't know. Oh, yeah, Wait, or oh something like a worldwide pandemic where yeah, out yeah. of nowhere. So, yeah, so I actually, them. I refreshed the blog last year because I know it's going to be able to relate to a lot of people, but I don't think anybody talks through the stages of grief, it, it, you know, as it relates to work. People no. talk about it all the time when it comes to death and when it comes to grieving a loved one and things like that, but we are married to our jobs. That it, it, it's what it, where we spend the most of our time most and the most time. investment of time. Because imagine that in a career, yes. it's like your whole education, every extracurricular activity mm-hmm. or club or anything that mm-hmm. you do is for you to be successful at this career. Right now, with twenty twenty, especially women, mm-hmm. um, especially mothers being yes. forced out of the workforce yes. it's almost like an identity crisis yes. in addition to all of this loss and grief who and- am i now because now i don't have this job and now i'm just i'm just mom again and for some people mom may be good enough but for some for some women th- that are very career driven they need that it's it's absolutely a part of who are. so I, you know, again, the article really was just kind of touching on all that ways that I processed it because the grief comes from when things are very sudden, right? It's not, oh, I'm, you know what? My company might close down in four months. Let me prepare and make sure that my portfolio is diversified and start resubmitting resumes. No, most people don't have that situation. The grief comes from no, no, no warning. Hey, Vanessa, uh, tomorrow at noon, your station is flipping. And not only 
are we laying you off, but we need you to lay off your staff. Other people who have jobs, you know what I'm saying? It just was crazy. So that's what that, that, that experience was rooted from. And I really just wanted to, to let people know that I promise you, if you work through all those emotions, because I was on the, I was on my mom's couch for like two months, like, no, I'm good. I'll get up and start looking for work after, you know, like next month. She was like, no, honey, let's go. 60 days is all, you know, yeah. Maryland, Maryland it is, is a firecracker. So she definitely has always lit the fire in me, like to keep going and to keep pushing, but to also think about, maybe I'm thinking about this the wrong way, Vanessa, and maybe you should think about things differently. And so that really is a part of processing grief too, is understanding, well, here's all the stuff that I learned from this experience now, what and, and grief is rooted in fear it's what it is you know you're 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 dealing with all those emotions but you're fearful about not being good enough not being qualified for the next opportunity oh my gosh you know am i gonna get hired oh my god am I all of your plans like oh, yes you yes. have your whole so, life already planned out and like when all of a sudden yeah. uh, so not, yeah, not so I hope there. people enjoy the blog um it's probably one of my most popular ones so I feel like every time I keep going back and re-editing and adding new things to it as new things come to me about experiences people have shared with me about how they're dealing with things. I have a question as, as, as a voice and as someone who, whose gift is communication. Yep. How did this year make you feel as far as being a woman of color mm -hmm. and how have you been able to communicate and articulate things that have no words? Yeah. I mean, what a great question. First and foremost, I feel like the time is now and the time is up for corporations to, because so many women are the backbones of corporations that never get the credit, right? And so I just feel like, what an awesome opportunity. That's the way that I see it. When I look around, Janet, and I see all the stuff that's gone on from Me Too to Black Lives Matter to now diversity and inclusion in the workplace, right? All of those kind of, you know, that wave. I feel like we're coming on the other side of it and now um, are able, are going to be able to um really be clear as women about the, the you know the things that we want and the, and the things that we tolerate and the things that are just no longer acceptable i think this movement has really given women of color and women in general an opportunity to, to speak up and say listen there there are some things that must change now and no longer and am i you know no longer am i my tribe my community going to be silent about it so i think all of these things as tumultuous and tragic as they were on multiple on, on multiple levels and layers they definitely created a lot of opportunity for um us to have the conversation the biggest thing that i've loved watching as uncomfortable as it's been janet is so many of my white and latina and male counterparts um you know say oh my gosh vanessa i didn't know that th this is all the stuff that you were having to deal with i thought you were just you know doing your job you know so uh, there's a, a lot of situations that i saw on your uh on your questionnaire that you mentioned if there was if there was a situation where you've, you you know you had to um basically help train a male counterpart to do your job yeah in more than one situation and more than one situation and because i didn't have the confidence to stand up and say you know what this this isn't going to um fly uh you know i i let things slide and so i think that this movement has really um kind of shook things up and kind of forced corporations ceos c-suite executives to take a look around and say holy crap this is an all white board this is an all male board or you know or executive staff but it's a female product we gotta do better guys no a thousand percent and and also um empowered women of color to speak up because now yes. with all these movements you feel like you almost have backup now like you feel more yeah. more able Absolutely. to Absolutely. um and also 
in doing all of my, obviously, you know, I'm a huge advocate for women, but in doing all of my research as far as like, because if I'm going to stay, state something, I need to understand like, what are the actual stats? What are the actual percentages? Right. What are, and in doing all of this research, I'm like, I know that women, the pay, like, there's such a huge gap with women in the workforce, but women of color. Yeah. It's like, it's really out of, and, and Latina women. Yes. And I, and I, and that's a conversation that I have a lot with my staff here in Miami because we're in Miami date. Miami date is not America. (laughs) No, it's not. It's not. It's It's not America. Like we, we are a minority. That's the majority. So I, I am not even aware I'm aware that I'm not aware of my minority. Well, I know sense. drive north to, to West Palm and above. And I feel like that's when you enter America. South Florida is not, it's not, it's not a real place. <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Um, so seeing how, how women are obviously affecting the workforce, but black women. Oh yeah. Oh Yeah. There's it's multiple like, occasions. It like, is so hard to be a black woman in America. Good yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. There's a, a lot of situations. I look back and I say to myself, man, Vanessa, you know what? You should have spoke up. Man, Vanessa, you know what? You should have gone and reported that person to HR. There's like at least 10 I can count up. At least 10 of blatant sexism, more than racism, sexism definitely underlying bigotry and racism too you know so and the ability though to have the words to articulate and to Mm -hmm. advocate for yourself that's a whole skill in and of itself that's not taught anywhere no no one talks about self-advocacy nobody and how to say things and how to like communication is such an important skill set in whatever have you seen janet that um if you go to Betches on their Instagram handle, they posted it last week. The girl went viral. She literally <laughs> did an email and it's her TikTok, a quick 15 second TikTok. And it's an, it's a, it's a TikTok of her doing an, you know, writing an email and then saying, you know what, let me write the email like my white male count. Yeah. Like just removing all the fluffy words. Yeah. And she took out please. And she added, um, thank you, you know, ASAP or whatever, like, you know, basically without like begging for something saying, this is what I need now. Thank you very much. Bye. Yeah. You know? And then her coffee cup is shaking. <laughs> I feel like so many times I can so relate to that. I can relate to that, you know, but now it, it definitely come a little bit more natural for me to just ask for what I want, advocate for myself and say, Hey, you know what? This is, this isn't going to work. Thank you so much, but no, thank you. And when you tell somebody, thank you very much, but no, thank you. They're like, hold on a second. She doesn't want to work with me. She yeah. doesn't want this job that, I, you know, this opportunity that I'm giving her yeah. for, you know, for six hours of work for $200. No, 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 no. Thank you so much. The one thing that Joycelyn Allen, um, I work with her all the time. She works, she's the CEO of the Tala agency. And she, she's my, she's my agency for Nissan, the, the client that I work with. She talks all the time about paying it forward though. And so to not leave that situation with resentment, Janet. So let's say somebody comes to you and says, hey, Janet, I want to do this awesome brand collaboration with you. And it's just not a right fit for you. Instead of just stopping at, hey, thank you so much for the opportunity. No, thank you. It's not going to fit into my, you know, into my quarter right now, whatever. She is is an advocate of taking it a step further and saying, but here are three awesome female entrepreneurs I think would be great for the opportunity. Yeah, well, I always do three, that. You know, so, mm-hmm. uh, you know, starting to, that's, that's really advocating for other women without even letting them know, you know? I love that. And to know you, since I started, have always been such a cheerleader for me b- before I even met you. Yeah. Like just on Instagram, you were always like, I see you girl. Yes. And like oh, tons of emojis. It's I'm like, who is too. this person? Who's like, always like, <laughs> she, she, like she cheers for me more than my own fam and friends. Right, like, right. Damn, people step <laughs> up your game. But I it was, so, but it, it's something that it's like, you never forget that. 
Yeah. You know, and that's why, like, even if before I met you, whenever anyone would ask me anything, I'd be like, oh, this girl, Vanessa Media, like, I would just always advocate for you, even if it was like, even through social media that we hadn't met, it was just, yeah, that's something that was, I'll never forget. So thank you. So if anyone, I want to open it up because we're um, almost out of time. If anyone has any questions, um, if not, you can mail in questions after, and then I'm sure Vanessa will, well, yes. um, I wanted to just one more thing before sure. from the questions that you asked. Okay. Um, you said something that reminded me of my husband about the part, the partner, like what? Was it your partner? Yes. Or who are your heroes in real life? Right? Your parents and your partner and how your partner cheering you on. Oh, yeah. And being that voice of like, you got this or that is the most important thing. I don't care how many degrees you have, how many internships, how many amazing jobs you have the partner that you choose to share your life with will determine your success. Period. I think you need to repeat that because the amount of people that I know that are in relationships that are not working and that, or got, got divorced during COVID, which by the way, was kind of crazy. I'm like a pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but now that they were forced to be together and realize they have nothing in common. And, you know, maybe that partner doesn't necessarily advocate for this person's lifestyle or their goals or their dreams. So for me, listen, as I expressed to you before, I am the daughter of Trinidadian parents. My dad is definitely the more easygoing, but if you need him to climb the coconut tree to get coconut coconuts for the scotch and coconut water we're gonna have later, it's done. If you need him to pick up this and da da da, hey dad, he's that dad. Yeah. Mom, mom has always been the firecracker. That's been like, no, you know what? Ask for it. You know what? Go for it, Vanessa. I believe in you. And Marcos, my partner, and I don't know. I don't know. Think I've ever told you that I I was married once before and divorced. And it was at the height of my radio career. And the reason it was not gonna work is because there was no allyship there. There was no, you know what, Vanessa, um, go for it. It was, oh no, you're, you, you know, you're working too much for the man. And, and, and um, you know, you're coming home too late, all that type stuff. So uh, bless his Puerto Rican heart, honey. He was super, super yeah. insecure <laughs> and couldn't handle a very professionally aggressive woman who wanted to, to, to rise and climb and try new things. And so I promised myself that, that my new partner, boyfriend, whatever we're calling him, Marcos, <laughs> um, you know, was going to be a person that um, was a friend first, you know, and, and, and someone that I could grow um, on multiple levels with, not just in a relationship. And so now we do like a lot of collaborative events together um he helped take over the vixen space and move this and you know so it was for, you know for yeah for but um i i i cannot express what you said probably better than you not having someone to advocate for you not just in your face but behind closed doors not having someone who is is a champion for you when it counts not having someone that can say hey you know what babe you really have been going hard. Let's take a break and go to the keys. Not having someone who, uh, and it doesn't have to be the keys, I'm just saying. Not having someone that's an advocate for you that can say, hold on, you know what? Um, maybe you should, you know, I think one of the biggest things that he does for me is, cause he's, again, he's so, he, he's definitely a lot more chill and I'm, I'm the crazy outgoing one is to always kind of bring things back to focus and center when I'm like, oh my gosh, let me tell you what happened today. You know, he's like, hold on, but did you get what you needed to get done? You know, yeah. so bringing things back into focus and to and to c- kind of really helping me get back into center of, okay, well, babe, what, you know, what was the goal? Did you get it done, accomplished? Because at the end of the day, it's about the goal. So again, it's, it's really having someone to, to champion for you as you would for them. And I have found that definitely in him. I think he's a great partner. I tell and him a all partner that makes space for your greatness. Yeah. And that's, that's not afraid to, 
be on the you know side of the stage holding your purse and your shoes because <laughs> that's no, 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 yeah it's my husband no I mean honestly like my when, when my husband and I first started dating he was like oh it's your birth um I think it was like my birthday like the first year we were dating he's like what do you or what do you want for Christmas and I was like trademarks Yeah, and he was like so confused because he had taken a picture like outside the Louboutin store and he's like, tell me what you want. What do you want? And I was like, that does nothing to me. Like, what do you want? Trademarks. He's like, I'm in love with you. I'm like, (laughs) but it was like, and he's, and he has his own business too. So it's never like, it's not competitive, but it's always like a, what did you accomplish today? Right. When he sees me accomplish, it drives him. And when I see him accomplish, it drives me. And it's like right. this, this partnership that we both allow each other to be great. And 1000%, I would not have been able at all to reach the heights that I have yeah. if it wasn't for having him as a partner. Because I've had partners who aren't about that at all. They're right. like, in theory, but if you have to work past five and not there to make dinner, no. You yeah. know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> and also a partner, Janet, that will say, well, babe, have you thought about this? Or, you know, I don't know if you realize you're really good at this. And so a lot of times we can't see our own greatness that our partners A thousand see. percent. They're the ones that get to see like, oh, wow, you know, you did a really good job speaking, you know, at Hispanicize or at the, you know, Grammys pre-party or hosting that thing, whatever the thing is. Um, you should do more of that. You know, that that type of thing, really, you know, being encouraging. It's so, it's so everything. I mean, yeah, for sure. When whoever people, you're with should, yeah. should, whoever you're with should have you, your best self times a hundred yep. when you're around them. You should, if you have to like tone it down to yeah. be around them, run for the hills. And run. what's, cr- yeah. And what's crazy is like, especially when you get married young, you feel like, okay, you're in love. And like, this is a person because you've been with them for however many years and you're in love. But if you guys don't have the same goals right, or the same types of dreams, girl, right. yeah. let me tell you, yeah, you're going to have and to give listen, up on your dream. Yeah. Your husband could be the, the most awesome, you know, pool, pool entrepreneur or landscaper or whatever it is. It doesn't matter though. It, it doesn't have to be that it's in the, in the same business no. or, or partner. It just has to be that they understand. Or he could be, exactly. He could be in corporate America or, or, or yeah, or be a yeah. stay at home, whatever it is. Whatever it it's is. It's just absolutely. like, as long as he claps for you. Yes, absolutely. Vanessa. I love you. Thank you so much for your time. You're so welcome. And uh, we need to do this again. I know. I know. I, 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 I can't believe it's been a year, uh, maybe a little more since I've seen you. Yeah. It's too long. It's too long. I'm ready to get my Vixen on. And by the way, congratulations on your virtual platform and your classes and all that. I get. I am on the Vixen email list. Thank you very much. Oh, so I am all the way updated on all oh things. god 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 <laughs> and um, Michelob and all of it congratulations yay thank you baby girl well I love you long time um for those of you watching you could catch this on demand on our virtual studio so thank you so much Vanessa and so we'll talk Janet. soon love you love you too take Bye. care